In one of the previous lessons, we have implemented a custom with plugin, which allows us to import CSV files inside JavaScript modules. Inside of our main JavaScript file, we are importing the file products.csv, and then raw content of the CSV file will be transformed by our plugin and turned into array of JavaScript objects. And from the code point of view, it looks like this. Inside of the configuration file, we are including this plugin by calling factory function csv, which we are importing from vid plugin csv file. Let's open up this file and take a look at the implementation. So here we're basically using the hook called transform, which will be called by vid anytime we are going to import csv files in ECMAScript modules. And then we're basically converting the raw content of the csv file into valid JavaScript array of objects by using this function parse. And at the end, we are returning valid ECMAScript module to the client, which contains the data from the CSV file in the form of array of JavaScript objects. And here is how our products.csv file currently looks like that we are importing in our main JavaScript file right here. And then we're basically injecting the content that we have received after importing that CSV file into the pre-tag. And which is why we're seeing the content of the CSV file on this page. But the thing is that now, if we're going to update the content of the CSV file, it will cause the full page refresh of the browser. And just to see it in action, let's create arbitrary constant plugin and see if this plugin constant will still be available after we're gonna modify CSV file. Let's just go ahead and make any modification to the content of the products.csv file. I'm basically gonna add another row in here and then in the browser. Let's see if the plugin constant is still available. So first of all, we're seeing here that the new line that was added in the CSV file was appeared on this page, but the plugin constant is undefined because browser has made full page refresh in order to update the content on the page. So now we're going to implement support of so-called hot module replacement for our plugin. And this technique basically allows us to update modules that are modified without doing the full page refresh in the browser. It's called HMR, which stands for Hot Module Replacement. And in order to implement Hot Module Replacement for our plugin, we need to use another hook provided by Evit called Handle Hot Update. This hook is going to do a synchronous operation, so let's mark this function as an async function. And as a first parameter into this function, Evit will pass context object. So this function will be called anytime we're going to modify any module that we are currently importing in our JavaScript files. But we don't need to listen for all updates, but only for updates that happen to .csv files. So let's use the same condition we have used in the transform hook and check if modification has been done to .csv file. Only then we're gonna run this logic inside this if conditional. But here, in order to access the file name which was updated, we need to reference property file on this context object. And the way we're gonna implement hot module replacement is by leveraging WebSocket connection and firing custom event to the client by using method send on the WebSocket object like this. And then we also have to specify custom configuration for this event. Let's specify the type, which will be a custom. The event name will be csv-update. Here we can use any kind of name we like. Later we're gonna listen to this event in the client code. And then we also have to specify the data key. And this key will basically store the content which we're going to send to the client. For now, let's just read the content of the updated CSV file by calling method read on the context object. And since this method is asynchronous, we have to await the response and then assign it to the data property like so. And right after that, just to tell Vit that we are going to take care about hot module replacement ourselves, we need to notify Vit about it by simply returning an empty array from this method like this. So now let's try it out one more time and check if the constant that we're going to declare in here will be available even after we're gonna modify .csv file. So I'm going to remove the last line of the CSV file 
and check if the plugin constant is still available. So as we can see, it is still defined, that means the browser hasn't reloaded the page. But we also haven't seen any changes to the content on the page, because we are currently not listening to the custom event that we are firing from the server. So this was the first part of implementing the hot module replacement, which is firing an event from the server to the client. The next part is to actually listen for this event on the client side. So I'm gonna switch over to the client script. And in here, first of all, let's check if the object which is responsible for hot module replacement exists. This object is stored on the meta property of an import object. And if so, we're going to register a listener for the custom event we have specified on the server with the name CSV update. And as a second argument to this function, we have to pass closure with one parameter. And this parameter is basically going to store the data that we have specified under the data key while sending this event right here. So first of all, let's check it out what we're going to receive in this data parameter. I'm going to print it out in a console. Let's switch over to the browser. As we can see, currently I have three products in my .csv file. Let's go there and change the content. And after that, in the browser, we can see that the console shows new content of the CSV file, including our latest product edition. So now we're gonna get to updates on the actual page, because after CSV file is modified, we need to properly change the content on the page. To do so, in our client script, I'm going to copy this line and paste it into this handler. So anytime we're gonna receive the new content from the server, we're going to update the content of the pre-tag by assigning updated content. But currently this content will be passed as a raw content of the CSV file. But what we need to do instead in our plugin is to actually transform CSV content into JavaScript array by calling function parse, just like we have done in this transform hook. So let's wrap the content of the CSV file in the parse function call, and this way client application will receive JavaScript array instead of a raw CSV content. So now back to the browser and check it out once again. Initially I have four products in my CSV file. Let's remove the last product from here and see how it will be reflected in the browser. As we can see content was changed and now instead of four products, I have only three, which corresponds to the latest content of the CSV file. And that means that our hot module replacement worked. And from the server via WebSocket connection we have received updated content of the CSV file in the form of array of objects. And of course now, as soon as I'm gonna do any kind of modifications to the CSV file, instantly I'm going to see those changes reflected on the page. So as we can see our force product was back. And now let's just do one little improvement to our plugin by passing structured data to the client. So I'm going to send an object with two properties. First property will be a URL and second one data. URL will store the pass to the module that was updated and the data will store the new transformed content of the updated module. Let's just add more descriptive message on the client side in the console and say which module was updated. And here we have to destructure two properties, URL and the data. Those are two properties we have just specified in the source code of our plugin right here. So now let's check it out one more time in a browser. We'll create constant plugin, and if this constant will be available, this will be a sign that the browser hasn't done full page refresh. So after modifying the content of the products.csv file, we can see that it was reflected on the page, as well as we can see the new log, which shows the path to the file which was updated. And of course, the constant plugin is still available. So our hot module replacement for CSV files works great. And this is how we can implement hot module replacement in with projects, by basically using the function handle hot update in our plugin, and then sending custom event via WebSocket to the client with appropriate payload, and then on the client side we are registering the listener for this event, 
accept updated data and then do whatever we need with this updated data in order to apply hot module replacement update. So this was one of the ways how we can implement hot module replacement in VIT.